Bottles, 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 bottles. I just remember talking to one girl and she's like, oh, well, you did it. You blew down the Twin Towers. You're Muslim. You did it. I didn't realize that I had PTSD in high school. I didn't understand what it was to be a Muslim without struggle, without someone who was the antithesis to me and who was trying to be combative with me. On September 11th, 2001, everywhere it's very, very difficult to see. The two airplanes have, have crashed into the World Trade Center. There are no words. The day after 9-11 was very hazy. I watched the towers fall the evening before, but I couldn't grasp it. I thought, oh, okay, well, we'll rebuild them. Everything will be fine. When I went to school, the teachers seemed very panicked. I was a very sociable young girl. The other students that I thought were my friends felt very uncomfortable around me. They didn't want to speak with me during recess or in between classes. Students would beat me up at lunch, grab me, throw things at me, kick me, spit on me. I was hit so badly by these boys, I wasn't able to breathe. The nurse just shrugged it off saying, oh, you'll be fine, don't worry about it. It was that moment where my childhood shifted for the next 10 years. Pre-9-11, I was very proud of my Muslim identity. I was proud of the fact that I had a very Muslim name, a name unlike all the other students. I wasn't a Stephanie, I wasn't a Maria, I was a Farzana. Post 9-11, all of that stopped. We stopped listening to the music. We stopped watching the television shows. My father stopped practicing. All I remember is that Islam became a topic that became increasingly hushed-hushed within my household. They told me to embrace this staunch Americanism, really sanitize my Muslim identity. By virtue of assimilation, I would be successful. And if I was successful, that meant I was safe. I developed a very strong relationship with my faith. I was constantly thinking about God, partially because it made me feel less lonely. It made me feel like I had someone there. I practice a faith that sustained me and quite literally kept me alive as I graduated that Catholic school and entered high school. There were other students, other Muslim students, who were struggling with depression, with mental illness, and many of my friends were self-harming, self-mutilating. I didn't do that, but I was strongly considering suicide. That's when my parents really started to get involved in my adolescence, but they never acknowledged mental illness in any capacity. They just thought I needed discipline. They didn't see it as me having mental illness or having PTSD or experiencing trauma. I am a part-time research technician at Brooklyn College in the Department of Chemistry. This has catapulted my research interests in mental health and neuropsychiatric disorders like depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and general anxiety disorder. Being able to molecularly categorize these illnesses as they affect many individuals in our community amidst the trying political times and folks within the Muslim community, giving scientific validation to the fact that these pathologies do exist. This autumn was very difficult for me. I was getting to a point in my activism where I was attending marches. I was writing about the abuses that Muslim folks experience in New York City, in this country. 
And in the wake of the growing Islamophobic rhetoric circa the election, it was becoming overwhelming. It was triggering to me so many fears of my own childhood growing up in a political climate where you are hated and you have to develop a personality based on everyone and everything hating you. Is like lying beneath a building. You learn to live pinned beneath that building, beneath any institution that refuses to acknowledge and validate who you are.